Yeah. In the case for the work system. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us gather here today. Let us do the work that you need to be done and let us have that reminder that it is your plan and we do nothing to change it but just have faith in your plan alone. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. We got Mr. Bear Curtis here. Um, he was an add item here to regarding uh, Silicon Ambulance Service. So, Mr. Bear? I just want to take just a couple of minutes of your time to kind of give you an idea of what's fixing to transpire. Um, I've been working with E911 for which Silicon Ambulance in the South Zone as all of you are familiar how that is bid out. Um, we got three years left on our contract. Um, the city of Talladega, or basically the North Zone, was giving was given a six month notice right at January, which is to expire at the end of this month, that North Star Ambulance was leaving their territory. So um, E911 reached out to us to see if we were interested in expanding um, for the remainder three year term for what we do here in the South Zone from Winneboro to the county line and maybe a little bit further down for Coosa um, for the North Zone. Um, has nothing really to do with Silicaga at all other than we're from Silicaga and it's Silicaga Ambulance. I know the mayor got a call, I think, yesterday. Um, the reporter from the Daily Home thought that it was the city's entity that was going to offer services. So, long story short, we have agreed and signed the contract with E911, and I've spoken with their hospital up there, their nursing homes just like here, we will place a hub there, uh, equipment, additional equipment will be added. Silicaga doesn't change, but I thought I owed it to you as a group, as city leaders, when you pick up the newspaper, hopefully Friday with the news release, and, and, and they would at least know that it's, you're not sending city assets to help Talladega then you wouldn't be caught off guard and say, well, you're going to have constituents that say they're leaving Silicaga to go to Talladega, and it's not that. We'll just open up another hub. Home office stays here. Administration stays here. Um, we still get dispatching through E911 like the city does, and I just thought I owed it to you to give you a heads up before you read it because you need to know those kind of things, but it doesn't affect Silicaga at all. So, so um, B, did I think me and you touched on this before? But did you say you would have to you buy ambulances and all that? Yeah, we just, there, so we just we wouldn't go without our ambulances no, or nothing. No, we probably got six, seven ambulances now, and yeah. and we just bought two more that can come in. But just like anything else, the supply hadn't been there. But um, it won't. Uh, they have employees up there that works for North Star, and corporate entities do things a little different than mom and pops and if they feel that it's more uh, profitable to take your assets somewhere else I'm not so sure what their problem was I've, I've heard scuttle but that's not for me to comment on they just are leaving their post mm -hmm. and we're going to assume it for the three years and then if we do it you know I have your test run so to speak yeah well now now that you told us you're kind of your phone won't smoke as much on Friday. It's going to be all right. I just wanted to inform you. And sure. Yes. I have two questions. So, did you, um, did you, how many additional people did you have to add, or did you just like take their people that were already doing it? Well, we are we are in the interviewing process. We had to go through a court order where this wouldn't have to be rebid and go through the bid process that you're all probably pretty aware of. And um, so that's only been approved maybe ten days ago. So. It wasn't like I could come and tell anybody ahead of time because nothing had been um, nothing had been shored up regardless. Talladega's just in a bad way. Um, and maybe we can get it worked out. If not, three years from now, maybe somebody else can come in, but I think we can. So what are their ambulances gonna say? Pardon? What's, what's gonna be on the outside of the ambulance? Is it's it gonna, gonna be Talladega? Talladega ambulance. Is it gonna yeah, be Talladega ambulance? Now, what I do later on, I mean, but there's a lot of red tape with uh, uh, reimbursements and the way we file things that it just, 
doesn't make sense to take, it's going to say Silicaga Ambulance. Um, as the corporate entity. As the corporate entity. Now, we might do a DBA at some point in time down the road, but uh, for right now, I mean, we got about a week and a half, and so um, the equipment's being purchased, and uh, the manpower, now that we're in this last week, we're interviewing, posting the positions, and um, they've got employees up there now, so, um, you know, we all pay about the same. You have to, so. Okay. Well, okay. I appreciate you get, letting us get ahead of that. Good deal. Thank you. Thank you all very Thank much. You. I'll jump in too and just let you all know that I've been in contact with Jody McMitchin who runs the day to day operations of SA and obviously we work closely together and yeah. you know, we're we're on the same page. He's kept me kinda in the loop on what's going on. Well every time you think that we're in bad shape, maybe sometimes you go to another municipality yeah. that don't have the teamwork that so the Congress got a lot to be thankful for in that area. Yes. So uh, thank you all very much. Thanks, Barry. Thank all right, we got one more discussion ad item. We got uh, Brian Tonton here, the director uh, for the CDA, and he's just going to give us an update on what's going on in your world. I just wanted you to know uh, that you guys will be receiving an incentive package on behalf of uh, Shri Askar uh, LLC. They have intentions on putting about an 80 room hotel and a 10 foot gas station, convenience, and liquor store. And I said, yeah, I won't announce the location just yet, but you'll, you'll be getting that information. You should have that in your hand by uh, next week. I think Brian Cash has already been putting together an MOU in hopes that we can uh, possibly go into executive session uh, after yep. the next meeting. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it, Ron. All right, we have, um, the architectural services discussion for the new recreational master plan. Um, I've got Ron Coleman with Difference Architecture and the group that he's involved with. Ron, right there. there you go. Come on in and introduce everybody, Ron. Okay. Joe, you may have to end up standing. Sure. Um, so first off, let me thank you guys for the opportunity to work work in the city on on this project and. Really what we want to do today is just kind of introduce the team. It's kind of probably unusual, maybe something that y'all haven't seen yet, but uh, we're going to kind of go about this project from a, a team standpoint. We're going to collaborate with each other. It's pretty common in our industry to do things this way, have local representation along with um, the design expertise, but that's kind of what we're <coughs> anticipating doing today. So we're going to introduce them and then if you have any questions for us, we'd be happy to, to answer. So this is Stephen Allen with uh, Williams Blackstock and Joey Tedisco with Williams Blackstock, and I'll have them kind of explain their roles at the firm. Okay. Hey there. Uh, happy Tuesday. Yeah. I think so. Tuesday to everyone. Uh, as Ryan said, I'm Stephen Allen, president of Williams Blackstock Architects. We are based in Birmingham, just right up the road, um, and have known Ryan for. Uh, uh, over a decade now and our firm has done some work with Ryan back uh, 10 12 years ago at Wallace State uh, Community College in Hansville uh, worked on a large project with him when he was uh, maybe in a different life working in Atlanta yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, he was big city Ryan back then but um, so we are a firm of about uh, 50 people, 50 plus people, architects and interior designers in Birmingham. And we do work all, all across the Southeast, mostly in the state of Alabama. Um, we've been very fortunate over the years to um, do a lot of municipal work, um, projects such as uh, Estavia Hill City Hall, Mountain Brook City Hall, finishing a police headquarters for the city of Alabaster right now. Uh, they should move in in about a month or so. Um, also done a lot of parks and aquatics work. We are finishing um, design on a new indoor and outdoor aquatics facility for Mobile County. Um, they will, they're kind of sharing some funding with the city, but our client there is the county. Um, also, um, done some large aquatics like UAB Campus Rec Center uh, that have a lot of different um, components to it. Also do a lot of um, 
smaller, larger projects um, as well. We're very fortunate to work with um, Auburn University, so we are here all the time. We have about four passing through here and all the time have about four people going down to Auburn on Thursday for a large project. Um, I have several things going there. For all you Roll Tide fans, we also are fortunate to do work at Alabama as well. You know what I look at you are? No. Yeah. There, there you go. And, and for all you Blazer fans, okay. <laughs> we can do some work at UAB sometimes. So, um, but uh, we, yeah, there you go. Um, we really, you know, um, pride ourselves on relationships and collaboration as well as experience. Um, you know, everyone wants and should want an expert and uh, when they hire someone. And so we really try to focus expertise on several sectors of work and um, understanding parks, rec centers, and aquatics is one of those. Um, uh, I also kind of live and breathe that in that my kids used to do competitive swim. And it's funny when you learn about a project in one way, but then when you spend four, eight, 12 hours in a day at a pool, waiting on your stinking kids to swim, you really learn a whole lot about that facility and, and the, the good and the bad and everything in between. Um, so that's been a little bit of uh, real world application. Um, Ryan noted, uh, talked about partnership, and I just wanted to mention that we, um, we, we really, as I said, we kind of pride ourselves on, on being experts in, in different fields, but we also try to realize we, we don't know what we don't know, and we find experts um, in a field when necessary. So we do a lot of partnering um, where we go seek expertise, and that may be from another architect in the state. Occasionally, that's an architect out of state, even do some work with you know Boston or New York architects. Um, and then sometimes we have the expertise and we partner with an architect such as Ryan. So we really understand how to do that well. Um, currently, we're partnering with a architecture firm on the Mississippi coast doing two VA assisted living homes um, <clears throat> in Mississippi. Uh, we also have one under construction in uh, Enterprise, um, large assisted living home. Uh, and then we've partnered with um, architects in Pensacola, Memphis, all around. So we really kind of understand how to do that and think what's important for y'all is it's not a, we, we want to have a seamless crew cast of characters where you know Ryan, you know Joey, you know Steven, and, and um, obviously you have a comfort level with Ryan being local, but you should have cross coverage and be able to have expertise and pick up the phone. Your key people, um, Steve and others, be able to pick up the phone anytime and, and get um, two or three consistent people um, because these are, these are, these projects can <coughs> last a long time during design and construction, and you need to be able to rely on um, an army of people, but really two or three people that you can call anytime, text, email, um, for better or for worse. But you know, anytime, whether it's a real problem or a concern or somewhere in between or a worry, you know, um, design and construction can can be emotional and there's a lot of decisions to make. So, um, you know, really, I think being there and, and having service is really important. So, um, does that cover a little bit about it us? It does. Okay. And the really important thing to note about Joey is Joey and I were college roommates and we've had a relationship for a long time. So if he gets out of line, I promise you, <laughs> I can pull him back. I got go. some good stories. About that. <laughs> Have you? Yeah. It could go the other way, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. If you could. Yeah, so Joey is, I'll speak to Joey just a little bit. Joey is a Everybody, I'm Joey. Uh, senior, <laughs> senior associate in our office. I'm going to brag on Joey a little bit. Um, and he uh, has been with our office since you graduated Auburn. Yeah. A few years, many years ago. Um, <laughs> and does a lot of complex work uh, 
some of our more complicated projects and Joey um, is, is, uh, has clients that will just, um, I think, possibly trade one of their, one of their own kids for Joey. He <laughs> provides, yeah, it's all happened. <laughs> but he, you know, just, um, everyone likes Joey, kind of like everyone likes Ryan. Um, well, <laughs> I've got my moments. They been here long <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, And, you know, um, when something is needed, you know, it's kind of, hey, I'll do it. I got it. No problem. Um, and so Joey provides a great, calm, steady presence um, along with Ryan, and uh, you can see why they're still friends. And, um, you know, that coupled with, with expertise of how to put a building together and why we make decisions and to help help you guide guide you through it, um, which is also important. So that sounds like a good introduction, Joey. Yeah, thanks. Do you guys have any questions about this process? So give us, uh, we kind of spoke a little bit on it, but just a vague, brief um, timeline of events to say, all right, you guys have it. Mm -hmm. Step A through Z. A through Z. So until it goes out. To so the, the feedback we've gotten so far is that we're we're still exploring the bond market, and there's a basic level of information that you need to have. And I can tell you from a building design standpoint, is some of the information that we still need to put together here is obviously some detailed programming of exactly what goes into this 22, 23 million dollar facility. We know there's an indoor aquatics component, but there's a lot of other stuff that's also happening in the building. And so identifying that so that we can get started um, drawing and, and, and concept designing. So I think what we've talked about, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Stephen, is is this first phase is what we would call concept design. I think you called it a basic architectural services for the first phase, um, is that we would go through a series of site diagrams and planning and, and programming to understand what this is, put together a schematic budget once we've detailed what it is that goes into this building that's really broken down more than just a blanket number um, based on historical numbers of aquatic facilities. It would be based on your program, and then you can take that information and go to the bond market. Yeah, I can add to that a little bit, um, and maybe kind of use Mobile County as an example. Um, when we, we started with them a year and a half or so ago, and um, they their their main desire, so they thought was well. They they said we think we're going to have to face this because we know we have desires larger than our budget, but we think we want to start with a twenty five by or twenty five by twenty five indoor pool with spectator seating for six to seven hundred, and then we would also like a secondary indoor pool for warm up and therapy and instruction. And then a future phase, we would like an outdoor 25 by 50 pool um, <clears throat> for competition. And, you know, when they, they kind of said initially, you know, we, we know that it's probably way outside of what we can do, but we'd like to understand, could we do it in phases over time? So we did do what we called a concept phase or kind of a, a scope phase before we got into the full design to really just say, all right, let's understand what you need or what would like to have on those three pools. And part of what I mean there is, you know, you could have a pool for competition swim, for therapy and instruction, or for leisure. Um, and they can sometimes be the same thing or they can be really totally different. Um, like at Wald Park in Vestavia, we did a competition pool that can also be used for fun during the summer. Um, but then next to it, we did a leisure pool with, you know, slides and whirly gigs and zero entry and things like that. Um, all right, UAB Campus Rec Center, we have a vortex that's kind of used for therapy because it's used for resistance. So it um, can be very different uses. So we talked through all that. That's a couple of meetings. That's really not hard to do. Um, doesn't take a lot of time. But then we did a lot of different options. We were showing this to, to Steve and um, a lot of different options and we came up with a, a very quick layout, not a full design at all, but we came up with the square footage of what that building could be in the outdoor for those three pools. 
And then we had a cost estimator look at that, and we looked at a cost for each of those three separate pools separately, <coughs> or all of them combined. And what was interesting, and then we looked at a couple of different combinations, and what was interesting was through that very early phase that probably took two, two months or so, they actually made a decision that they thought they would not, that was not their original thought of what they, what they were thinking they would do. They actually chose to do the outdoor pool combined with the, the smaller indoor pool because they realized they could get a bigger bang for their, for their dollar by doing those two and then phase the other, the bigger indoor pool at a later time. So that's kind of an example of um, <coughs> what we could do, what that preliminary phase might be. Um, and then that gets you an order of magnitude cost to then say, all right, how does the bond market look based on this? And then kind of use it as our marching orders to say, um, all right, go finish designing, why aren't you, and y'all say, why aren't you done yet? Yeah. Um, <laughs> That'll happen. Yeah, um, <coughs> really get ready to, to do construction documents. Yeah. So I mean, in terms for, for you guys, it's really, it's two separate time frames and uh, we can set it up. Steve and I talked before the meeting about whether it's an additional service added to the, this, the overall fee that's based on a percentage of construction cost, maybe even a not to exceed, or just a separate agreement for this phase and then we roll into the percentage of the design part of uh, the project later. That's just something that we want to need to discuss, and we'll come to a resolution of that together and um, go from there. Okay, so I guess our next step is the councils. I guess for now, since we don't have numbers yet, but we'll, uh, we'll get those and share contact info, but we'll email you to set up a meeting, I guess, with, with everybody and talk about the program. Or, discuss in further detail the program? Yeah, uh, well, I think what we need to discuss is that first phase, identify the scope of what we need to address in that first phase to get you to the, the bond okay. uh, market. And um, and then during that, once we get going, there'll be meetings directly with end users um, mm -hmm. in the Parks and Rec. For instance, if administration goes from the Parks and Rec into this new building, we need to program that. We need to know how many offices, what's the expectation of the staff, and how is there, and also, room for growth, right? Because we don't want to throw us up in a box right off the bat. So all of those things will be discussed during that first phase to get us there. So just, <clears throat> if you will, email me y'all's times to me. I don't, okay. I don't know your schedules, but then I'll take that and get with the council and see okay. what, what kind of date and time we can get with the meeting. Awesome. And start, kick this off. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank y'all for coming. I'm it's nice Thanks to meet y'all. Really looking forward to working with you guys. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Any other questions? You got a call? I'm good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Well, look forward to working with y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you. 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 you. bet. Yeah. I have one more for my Oh, no, look, there's a name. Player, I'm on, you all switch pins? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to switch pins? They all want you to stop clicking. Yeah, don't grab your eyes. There's no camera doing that. <laughs> well, I was kicking you. Not my phone. I guarantee you this bike was called Pixie. Was there, was there not enough for the side of the room? I just got this and brought it out. We only got one. Everybody got one. We got one more thing. For uh, the signatures for checks, we need that. We have that resolution on there. Yes, sir. So what we have for discussion? Anything to discuss? I, I, I thought we already did it. So did we not do it? We did it for me, um, but we need to get a fourth. Um, Back up. We need to appoint somebody other than me from the clerk's office. Oh. Okay. okay. So, but you you have had you have we did. I have it. Yes. Okay. But I need to appoint an alternate for me. Okay. All right, then the Nickel Brown. Okay. The uh, agenda items I'll go over real quick. We have a resolution uh, to appoint the part time judge, and that is set up in nomination form, correct, Alex? I have yes, sir, it is. Agenda, okay. And then approve the resolution for the salary, which we discussed. We're going to stay the same until this budgeting season, then we can talk about changing 
um, resolution again for the signatories we just talked about. We have a resolution for budget increase on the line item. That is the 40000 for the 5311 safe. And that's the new thing. Yes, sir, we about yesterday. Yeah, for, forgive me for my words, I'm going blank. The new uh, program that they're getting into. And then the next item would be the 25000 uh, for the aging, the sen senior side. That goes to them. And that kind of makes up the downfall of what we discussed. So did we did we ever get the the paperwork? I know I asked the last meeting to show us where we messed up at. Yes, sir. I sent or yes, ma'am. I sent it to you. Okay. If I didn't get. I guess I was expecting some paper. I emailed it to the council earlier. I guess I should have just emailed all of them. I should have just printed it off myself then. Yeah. I guess. Um, and then we got street sounds vote. Um, we have liquor license uh, permitting and. Appointment to uh, Craig Stickley for the Industrial Development Board. Okay, quick, quick question. Uh, item number four. This is for the new program, and item five is for the old program. Yes. The new that's replacing the workforce ready. Yeah, or this is this is the this is all the transportation program. Okay, so the, the these two are for getting back from us invoicing them the maintenance and fees and stuff. That's correct. Yes, sir. But did we, mm -hmm. but did we not pay them out of the senior fund for that, for the maintenance and the, um, the gas? Mm -hmm. We're just supposed to absorb it, but we were invoicing them and they were paying. Pay I know, but what I'm saying, but, we gave. but we're not giving them money out of the senior fund every month for that? No. Mm -hmm. We're not paying the gas bills and the maintenance bills? No, we charge it back to them. That's yeah. where we missed that something new that's just been done recently, or have we done it for the last 30 years? I don't know if we've done it for the last 30 years, um, but we've looked at it and we've provided all the documentation you all know, asked for. It's been it's been done yeah, over sure more than just been, a year. This past this past contract, it has been done wrong because of the contract states that we assume the price, the cost of the fuel and the maintenance, but. We were doing that and then invoicing them back to SAFE and they were paying it. So it was never brought up by SAFE, but again, we should have never invoiced it to them. So kind we of paid. We're, we're fixing it now yeah. and giving them back to the So line. SAFE was SAFE was paying us or was not paying us for some they were paying invoices as well? Like it was coming out of their 85000 like, yes. and it wasn't supposed to come out of their 85000 That was supposed paying to be. Paying us because we were deducting it before distributing in their 85000 No, we were just invoicing them. Yeah. So they were paying us back out of the 85 that we paid them. And they should have never paid us because we assumed the cost of the maintenance and fuel. That's what we talked about last meeting, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Is that why Margaret was here? Yes, sir. I thought so. But anything else? I don't have anything. All right, we'll be adjourned and meet again downstairs shortly.